Astrophotography requires shooting dim objects in the blackness of space, and this means we're going to encounter noise, noise that has to be removed if the images are going to be beautiful. A couple popular ways of dealing with noise are to use Cyril's own denoising tools, or if you're willing to shell out a little bit of extra cash, you could get Topaz's powerful denoiser. But I have a better tool and a better method. Let's take a look. We'll start by comparing Cyril's denoising versus Topaz. In this video, to study denoising, we're going to use a relatively dim object, the Iris Nebula, a reflection nebula that is bright near the center where stars illuminate it, and slowly dims as one moves away, the haze fading into blackness. This is a scenario which practically gives birth to noise. I gathered the data on two nights of border one skies over my Canadian backwoods homestead using a Williams Optics ZS81 telescope mounted on a Skywatcher EQ6R. The image capture software was Nina, the data was created using a Player One Uranus C camera with a ZWO DO band filter in front of it. And the image represents 10.5 hours of data comprised of five minute subframes shot at 181 gain. The images were stacked in serial using flats and bias calibration frames. As you can see, there is all kinds of noise in this image, a little color noise and a lot of luminance noise. And there is also some walking noise the walking noise happened because on the first night of shooting the subject, when I calibrated PHD2, for whatever reason, there was some kind of glitch with the calibration and the subject slowly moved across the sky during the nights and dithering didn't happen. But hey, for our purposes here, this works because this gives a great example to look at not only luminance and color noise, the most common kinds of noise, but also walking noise. If you're unfamiliar with these different kinds of noises, we'll go more deeply into them in a future video. But luminance noise is simply a scatter of brightness, color noise is a scatter of unwanted color, and walking noise is sometimes called brush noise. It looks almost like a brush has been lightly to heavily marked across an image. So what we're going to do here is just experiment with all the different types of denoising in Cyril. We'll start off with the no secondary denoising option. Watch closely at what happens when the algorithm is done. We lose a little bit of the noise in the darker area away from the subject, but we also lose detail in the nebula. And losing that detail is highly undesirable. Let's go back and undo it and try the next algorithm, the Anscombe denoising. This one I feel does a little bit of a better job, but we still have that unacceptable loss of detail in the heart of the nebula. Once again, this one will not do. So now we'll try the final method, strengthening the operate subtract iterator. I'm going to speed through this because it's a fairly lengthy algorithm. This algorithm gives us the best noise reduction with the least detail noise in the center of the nebula itself. But there is still some detail loss, which to me is unacceptable. And honestly, there isn't that much noise reduction in the dark spaces. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to consider Cyril's denoising, especially with this nebula subject, a fail. Let's see if Topaz does any better. Topaz does a really good job of showing us a preview of the original image on the left and what its denoising would look like on the right. But unfortunately, regardless of any variation that we try, we really don't get that much denoising in the dark space. And what little we do get comes with a sacrifice of detail in the center of the nebula. And to me, any loss of detail simply is not acceptable. There has to be a better way. And there is. This is Affinity Photo. It is hands down one of the most powerful video editors available to the prosumer market. And I don't work for Affinity, I don't get any commissions for suggesting this, but I'll tell you, this video editor only costs $100 and it does virtually everything. And often it's on sale for about half off. I've used it for years and I absolutely adore it. So let's use Affinity to deal with this noise. In Affinity, we work with layers, which gives us very specific control, both in noise and editing. I've opened up Affinity's denoising layer and I am immediately going to remove all the color noise. Now there isn't really much color in this image, so it's not going to affect the detail to remove the color noise. It'll make a very small difference, a very small improvement, but a minor improvement and a very specific improvement we can make nonetheless at no cost to the detail of the image. Now most of the noise in this image is luminance noise, but the problem is when we remove the luminance noise, we are going to lose detail fast in the nebula itself but there is a lot of luminance noise close to the nebula. There's also the walking noise that really stands out further away, which is generally considered almost impossible to deal with, but we are going to deal with it. Experimenting with the Affinity Denoiser reveals it can almost entirely remove all the types of noise, though at great cost to the detail in the nebula. To preserve the detail, we are going to create another layer portraying the subject. 
One layer will not have the noise removed and we're going to call that one foreground, or FG for short. Then we're going to drag the denoise layer into the background layer so that the denoise layer affects only the background layer. In the denoise layer, we're going to turn up the luminance denoising to 18%. This will get rid of almost all the noise in the background layer, though at great cost of detail to the subject matter. But that's okay, we're going to get that detail back in a moment. Now we're going to reselect the foreground layer. Remember the foreground is where we have preserved our original image, along with all its detail and all its noise. Then we're going to select the eraser tool so that we can erase select portions of the foreground. And we're going to modify the hardness of the tool so that it has soft edges, so that where the eraser tool has passed, the transition will be virtually unnoticeable. And then what we're going to do is simply erase most of the foreground, revealing the denoised regions behind. This will smooth out and improve the dark black spaces and also improve the appearance of the nebulous gases, which will take on a fuller, more cloud-like form. We're simply going to run our eraser around and around the image, getting closer and closer toward the core, but we are never going to pass over the core. In the core, we want to, at the minimum, preserve our detail. Look at how good this looks. In moments, nearly all the noise is gone. By changing the eraser size, we can be very specific about where we erase as we get closer to the core of the nebula. Now we have smooth space, clouds that look like clouds, and yet we retain detail in the heart of our nebula. Now this image already portrays noise reduction that is greatly improved over both Cyril and Topaz, but we can enhance this even further, getting rid of more noise and improving the overall quality of the image. We're going to begin by adding a clarity layer and making it a sublayer of the foreground so it affects only the nebula. With this, we can easily enhance the clarity of the center of the nebula where all our detail is. Enhancing clarity tends to make things look blocky and enhance noise, but by just adding a little bit more clarity to the center of the nebula, we can improve detail without worsening the rest of the image. 16 to 19 look pretty good. We'll leave it at 19. Now we're going to very gently enhance both our black and white levels. This will reduce the luminance transition at the upper left and lower right portions of the frame, virtually eliminate any residual noise, and improve contrast on the subject matter, making the image look better overall. That looks good. Now we're going to enhance these improvements even more by adjusting our curves just a slight bit. We just want to increase our dark threshold just a little bit to lose some of the residual and unwanted light and noise in the background which will further smooth out the dark areas of the image and improve contrast on the subject. Now earlier I removed the stars from this image using StarNet through Cyril. At the time I also quickly brightened them, enhanced their color, and then desaturated them through Cyril, and then saved them as a TIFF to use later in Affinity. Now Affinity can handle FITS files just fine, but it saves you a few steps just to convert them to TIFFs in Cyril so they can be ready to go on Affinity. Let's go ahead and add the stars back. Adding that layer will go even further toward improving contrast, the darks, and shaping out and filling the entire image. We could add the stars back in Cyril, but we can do so much more effectively in Affinity Photo with a great deal more control of what the final image will look like. To put the stars back in the image, all we have to do is grab the file from the File Explorer and drag it directly onto the image. Then we'll drag it over the image till it snaps back into its proper position. Once we have the star layer in place, we're going to select it and then select which compositing effect we want to use to add the stars and the starless mass together. Cyril gives many options for how to composite images together, and it's often fun to experiment with the options and you can get some beautiful and creative results. But in this case, the add composite, where the two images are simply added together, gives the clearest results and the results which I think portray the Iris Nebula and its background most realistically. When the image is composited back together, I find that there's still a fair bit of unwanted background light. I'd like to have the space here a little darker. We can easily accomplish this by adding a shadows and highlights layer to the top of the layer stack, so it affects both the foreground and the background layers. Then we'll just pull down the shadows a little bit, which only darkens the space and the low level light and pretty much leaves the stars and the nebula alone. And that way we don't lose any detail or desired luminance. And in a few minutes, we have a beautiful and virtually noise-free finished result. And all you need to accomplish this is Cyril, which is free, and Affinity Photo, which is very inexpensive. 
No expensive additional software or plugins required. Thank you again for joining me on the Sky Story channel, where we study all things astronomy and astrophotography related. If you like these instructional videos on astrophotography, please leave a like. And if you have any thoughts or comments, please let me know. We're all learning this together.